so I need to spin it round, but as soon as it does that, I need to turn in the harness, and that corrects it, turn in the harness. But if I stand like that, that's uncomfortable, so the tendency is to stand like that, and it goes wrong. Whereas if you turn the head, then the shoulders and the body follows, and it corrects it. So at the moment it's going that way. So if I turn that way step and I'm in with the shoulders, that's enough to correct it. But if I let it go beyond a certain point, then I'm fighting it. Turn, step. And that's all the assist that's needed. That mount is just fractionally more than gravity on the, the brake handles. I mean, does that just basically sit there now? So it's going soft, it's rolling to my right, wings right, that tip's soft. If I turn, that's corrected it as it comes up, that's the damper needed, that was all. It's gone that way, turn, stay, that's it. Can you really see much movement in the hands? That's it. And just a wee damp at the top. <laughs> that's from there. Now, look at the gap on the shoulder. Yep, different harnesses. I'm not okay with any harness. But the difference is there. There's an air gap. I've got no shoulder to riser contact on the right, but I've got this one to the left. So all I need to do, there. Now I've got to there before, things go wrong, before things go wrong. And then if I want to go that way, step one way. Tiny bit of brake to keep it there. If I want to go faster, I'll go up, tack it round, overstep. How little. It's almost lifting the brakes. <laughs> you know, from there to there, that becomes too much brake. <laughs> so the wing's hanging back. I can feel it. The chest strap at the moment is telling me that the wing's behind because there's a slight yeah. pullback from both yeah. sides. Plus the shoulder's touching on the left just now, so I need to turn and that's enough to correct it. the other way, but turn the step, that's it, it's turn the other way, it's turn the step, take it back, turn step, that's it, it's now rolled slightly left, but not too much, yes it's going soft, it's going hard, that's it, and flex, there, but how little brake, but you can cheat with the shoulder. How effective is that? Same as doing this. <laughs> so I can bring that down. Up. I mean, look at the kink, the warping in the middle. There it's taking it down, there it's putting flow from the top wing to the bottom wing. Bring it back. Change. Touch, hold, lift. It's all to do with that kink in the middle. Down, up. Airflow from the left wing is going to the right wing, rolls up, at which point at the top you've got that very brief damping. Bring it over, bringing it down because looking at it, but as soon as I look away from it, if I've got ground friction, so I still slow it down there. Yes, I can use the brakes, but how close is it spin brisk? just enough for the pitch, hold it at that, look away, see the, the change in the middle, kink, 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 before it shoots, kink, kink, and then as it starts to slide up, I start to reverse the input to slow it down, And if I was left-handed, I'd be doing it like that. So left-handed, it's easy when it's down there because the risers are open. So that's a, sorry, apology. I got I'm so used to doing it both ways. That's right-handed pilot. Yep. But on a right-handed pilot, when it's over that way, it's harder because you've, you've got all of this issue. So you've got to reach round. 
and that makes a big difference. There, you think, oh, I don't have any brake on. You actually do. Whereas if you're a left-handed pilot, I say, I'm used to teaching both, then when you go that way, it opens out. So that's the left-handed pilot has no problem looking at this side. Nice, clean, smooth controls, but... Uh, <laughs> doing it the wrong way there. Hang on a second, I'll bring it over. Yeah, so with a left-handed pilot, they have this issue. The right hand is snaggy. So for a left-handed pilot, they've got to do that with the right hand to get zero brake. The main thing is the low wing, you don't really need any brake on. The tiny bit of brake, particularly on a low rated glider, is simply a pitch control to stop it going frontal. So if I go back, there it goes soft. If I go there, it recovers. Now despite going quite radical on that, how far did I... I hate these magnets. So bring it down, recover. And yes, I've got a messy one there because I need to tactile visual check and reapply. So bring it down, check the airspace, turn, hold it down. You've got that friction. But if you're right-handed and set up for a conventional right-handed and it's off to that side, so that's the side you use if you're right-handed to lift you on your feet. If you're on the ground and you're right-handed, you want the wing roll to your right. So you look at it, brings it round, knee folds, leg braces, lifts you. So you're not standing up, you're actually pushing back and down as the wing does all the work. If you want to sit down, same sort of thing. But fold the knee, down, take my time, reach up, wait, 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 safeties. No power in that. Then, roll round, down, go for non-safety hand for a second, because you must check your reserve. Reserve is okay. Go back to brakes only. Now the angle of the glider will change. It'll actually be slightly better when I stand up. I've got to watch the loading. So one foot goes in front, easing up, cheat high, safety and on, safety and on. If I pull too much safety, and if I can get the air under it, it lifts in the horseshoe. Ease off the safety so the A's bite. Checking the airspace. It's going upside down. Zero brakes. Because all the controls are now reversed. So reset, check the harness. Tactile. Visual. Only wrong hand ever reaches above. Never reaches for the handle. But because it's upside down, I don't want a lot of brake on. Tactile, visual. Yep, happy with that. Get the stance sorted. Just enough to get the tip out. Okay, check the airspace. Just enough brake to make an upside down wall, but not to lift it. Roll control staying square to the wing until the tip's going in. Which case, bring that on. 12 o'clock reversed and across. Turn, wait, yawing, I can now step in the per Sorry? Oh yeah. No. No. Because it's not generating a lot of power because of the way I configured it. So from there, I mean the bit of filming earlier on was leaving there. You can see the window. So I've got the wing rolled slightly right. That's okay. I've got the wing rolled slightly right at the moment. If I go over here, I can change my altitude. As the height changes, you get this. Big problem. Okay, however, if I add an airspeed, Start off here, go the wing, and the speed, and back. The 
transition is very smooth in comparison. So from here, also a bit differential on the brakes, you'll get a good view from that side. So at the moment it's pointing straight into wind, yeah. but I need it to be turned. So as I go faster on the ground speed, the apparent wind direction shifts. So we've got roll, this riser's vertical. Like the wind you all leave it. How smooth. Now it's not as if there's suddenly a vast change in the airspeed because I'm going crossed. Yeah, yeah. So I added in maybe what three knots. It was enough to make a big difference. So before I went off the edge, more airspeed meant less of my weight on the ground, more loading on the wing. Also, I already had drag. The wing was ahead of me doing the work. So obviously it fairly fast, it's a good time to just try too much roll. And transit. <laughs> so was the wing already flying round? So you're putting roll in by leaning? No, step the wrong way. Step the wrong way. Oh, okay. Yep. So... No, which way do I want to go? So I step the wrong way. You can see, yeah, there'd be no chance. I mean, I could do it in a normal glider. And earlier on, I did the jump where I got three knots the way up the road. But, but I need to have my foot higher than the pole so that I can get the bag and jump out to land. And I've got this rocky thing right behind me. We've got cyclists, folks there, we've got vehicles. So I need to add in enough thrust to not get too far ahead of the glider. Waiting till it's nodded forwards. It's not yet. Also got roll and alignment issues. Check the airspace again. And I've got the major hazards. Roll issue. I can't do too much stepping. I've got to use the brakes at the moment because I've got to keep my runway. And there'll be a big transit for lift as I get closer to the edge. I mean, full-size wing with a wind that's doable. It's easy. If I could go from the top there and there was less of that, just stand balanced on the top. I mean, this is perfect. So from there, hardly any sound off the glider as a transit from on partial ground to on partial ground. Waiting. Waiting. Waiting, checking. Now, normally I could go back, but enough roll to transit the feet. No, too wide there. It wasn't so bad in the, when I was spending years dancing and could do the splits. Roll it round. Well, that one's a bit easier, however. So from here, I want this more airspeed. So backtrack. Positioning. I'm not happy with that, it's too gusty. So I get too much variation. Never got to be the smoothest doing that, but hey. Check the airspace. Look at the wing. The 
harness set up again. Check the control, check the airspace, recheck the control, turn to the cover. Check the traffic. And if I'm backtracking, I've got less wind speed. Okay, now backtrack with the down step. Got to change the loading. So bend and then touch. Okay, step the wrong way, then look at the wing, clear the pole, down into the dead zone, turning majorly looking the wrong way, and, 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 wait, bring it in closer, and walk with the wind. You playing any ball with it? No, you have a go. Get no, warmed no, no. get warmed up. You're not getting your other one out, mate. It's too weak. Do you want to see it? I'll get out. No problem.